Hi everybody, my name is Margarita Castro and today I'm going to share with you our exciting research on empirical confidence models for supervised machine learning. And this is a joint work with my colleagues in General Electric Glo Global Research Center. Um, so to motivate our, our research, uh, nowadays there's a lot of applications where we're using machine learning techniques that have a high stake. So for instance, cybersecurity, self-driving cars, and a lot of healthcare applications, including for instance, healthcare diagnosis of cancer or other diseases. So the main issue in these, uh, scenario, in these settings is that we have high stakes. So whenever we make a mistake, it can have, it can have huge impact uh, in, for instance, human life. So we actually want models that have really good predictions. But the issue here is that we can expect the models to have perfect predictions because the data that we have is not even perfect. And also summarized statistics can be very misleading to assess a specific prediction. So for instance, not because we have a 95% accuracy, it means that all our predictions or most of them are going to be good. There might be a subset of them that are very, very good and another subset that are very bad because they are mostly like closely to outliers. So what we propose here is a, is a model that can declare its own incompetence. And we're going to focus actually in a regression models. So as we say in the paper, we want to develop techniques that learn when models generated by certain techniques on a particular data set can be expected to perform well and when not. So to do so, we have the, the following settings. So what we're going to have is a runtime instance X, and then we're going to give it to our regression model, but also to a competence assessor. So the idea here is that we're going to get a prediction, but also a competence level, how much we're going to trust in this prediction. And we have three classes in general, trusted, cautioned, and not trusted. So, so the idea here is to give some extra guidance to the user of a machine learning model so it can assess actually how much it can trust on the predictions of our regressor. So in this talk, we're going to divide it into two parts. The first one is about the competence assessor. So I'm going to explain the overall framework, the features that we have, how we train the model, how we generate the, the data to train the model. And also in the second part, we're going to have our numerical evaluation where we have all of our results, the experimental setting that we use, and also some conclusions of future work uh, directions. So as I said before, I'm going to start with the empirical competence assessor first. Uh, here I'm going to show you the basic uh, pipeline that we have. So we have our runtime input that we're going to give to our regressor and it's going to give us a prediction. But in addition, we're going to have this competent assessor. But what it does, it receives the uh, runtime input, the regressor model, and the training set. With this information, we generate what we call the meta features. That is basically the input that we're going to give to the competence assessor. And given this input, the competent assessor is going to tell us the competence level of this prediction for this specific uh, input. And the regressor is trained normally, so uh, we use your training set uh, for over a certain technique, for instance, random forest or linear regression, to get our regressor. So now in the following, I'm going to focus on the main two parts of the competent assessor. The first one is the meta feature builder, how we generate the input, and also then how we're going to actually train the competent assessor and how we generate their data to train it. So in the meta feature builder, the main idea is that we want to relate the runtime input with the training data and the regression technique that we have. So here we have the input, the prediction of the regressor model, and also the training set. We put it all to inside our meta feature builder and it's going to return us the input for the competence assessor. So here is basically the same input that we, uh, we have before, the runtime one, its prediction, and also six additional features that basically are going to relate how the runtime input relates to the training set and the predictions and the, uh, and the performance on, of our regressor. To have a lot of, uh, 
to have a better idea how everything is linked together. So to make this relationship, uh, we test different type of distances measure depending on our regressor technique. So we have some specific distance measure where it was a random forest or a, a regression, and it, I mean a random forest or, or a linear regression. And we also use a Euclidean distance if we didn't have any specific one. And this distance was used to also create a neighborhood so we can evaluate how close is our uh, current or runtime input to the training data. And for the neighborhood, we actually use k nearest neighbors with k equal to five. But of course, if for your specific application, you can tune these parameters, the distances, the k, uh, to make it work for you. So in terms of the meta features that we have, the first one is the average distance to the neighborhood. And the main idea here is to measure how far is the runtime input from the training uh, data set. So it's, be, it's the most basic one that you can think. Uh, the following two is more about the prediction. So we have the average prediction distance between the input predictions and the neighborhood ones, and also the deviation from the regressor's prediction. And the main idea here is to have a relationship between the predictions at the vicinity of the current input. Get some information now on that side of the data. Uh, the fourth and fifth one, uh, meta features focus more on the training error in the neighborhood. So we have the average training error on the neighborhood and the variance. And the, the idea here is basically to measure the accuracy of our regressor in the immediate vicinity of our runtime input. And the last one that we have is mostly focused on the target value variability. So basically the variance of the true values of our neighborhood. So how much variance the actual data had. So here is not that much about the prediction, but mostly about the variance. So with all these features, now we're going to create the input, uh, the training data for our competence uh, assessor. So basically we have the training set that we give it to us a, a splitter that is going to divide the data into a base and validation set. I'm going to explain later how the splitter actually works. And the main idea here is that the base is used to uh, train our regressor. Um, we use the validation set uh, overall regressor to get the predictions. And now we're going to use all this data, uh, put it in our meta feature builder to, to create the input, the training input for our model. So we give the base, uh, the validation, that is basically the runtime input as we have it before, it's prediction, and, and we get the, the, the input for the competence assessor. In addition, uh, for the labels, we, what we do is that we compare the true values with the predictions of the regressor to get the labels of how much we confidence we have on our prediction. Remember, it was trusted, not trusted, or worn. And all of this creates the training data for our competence assessor. So in the splitter, we the main idea is that we split the data in different ways to create as many examples as we can. And the first technique that we use is the standard cross-validation. So it's basically random splitting with H buckets. Uh, we try H between three, uh, with values three, five, and 10. And one of these buckets is the validation and the rest is the base. So very standard cross-validation. And the second one is more interesting because here the idea is that we want to assess the IID assumption of our technique. So we want to create basically interpolation and extrapolation scenarios. What happens if we take out as validation uh, a portion of the data that has similar characteristics? So to do this, we project the data, the training set over its first and second uh, PC dimension, sort the data, and then uh, take as base the first, I don't know, K instances, and then the next one is the validation. So that would be, for instance, an extrapolation um, technique. An interpolation one would be if we take a middle bucket to be the validation set. So as I said before, we do this multiple times, both uh, standard cross-validation and the projection splitting to get as many 
uh, input data on different characteristics of the base and validation splits, so we can actually train our competence assessor. On the other side, we also need to give uh, labels of how much we trust our model uh, to, to create the data for the competence assessor. So here, what we, our labels, uh, what we decided to do is, uh, is have them based on the true error of the learn model. model. So the, the idea is that we sort the absolute residual values in ascending order and set the labels uh, according to this order. So the smallest uh, residual values, the ones that are basically the prediction are closer to the true values, those are going to be our trusted uh, um, labels. So that's the 80% smaller. Then from 80 to 85 is going to be the cautious ones. And then the last 5% is going to be the not trusted. So of course, this is very generic, so you can use it for any application, but if you have a specific one, uh, you can modify how we you label the data and it shouldn't affect that much your model. Uh, in terms of the training technique, we also went very general. So we try an SBM and also a random forest classifier. Uh, off the shelf, we didn't tune any of the parameters because they, our goal was mostly to taste our framework rather than the actual accuracy of our competence assessor. Um, we can use, of course, more sophisticated techniques for a specific applications if that's what you need for, for your problems. So now I'm going to move to the numerical evaluation of our project. Uh, here, the objective is basically evaluate uh, our empirical competence uh, model over different scenarios. So we have six UCI benchmark data sets. We have regressors that it could be linear, random forest, and SPR, all of them off the shelf uh, without any parameter tuning. And the tasks are a standard uh, cross-validation tasks, interpolation, and also extrapolation. So to generate the task, well, we have the standard cross-validation. And for the interpolation extrapolation, we have uh, two techniques. The first one is that we cluster the data, for instance, using k-means. And then we take uh, whole clusters as our validation, as our test set, sorry. Uh, and so the idea is that the test set is, is, a, is very different to the training set. And then we did something very similar to the, what we did in the splitter that was a, a use a PC dimension, to project the data there, sort it, and then split accordingly. So that, that will create our interpolation and, and extrapolation testing uh, tasks. So the first experiment, we just wanted to show you a proof of concept. So it's a very simple experiment that illustrates uh, the correctness of our approach. So we have a one dimension data following a linear regression with random noise, so very simple. Uh, we have an interpolation task. So basically we have uh, data across a line, but we just take the middle portion. And that is going to be our test set. And we tested a, a linear regression and a random forest, and we want to know if our competence assessor is going to assess correctly when we should trust on that model and when we shouldn't. So here are the results. And the dots correspond to the test instances. So all the parts that don't, don't have dots actually correspond to, to the training sets here. And, and, and the, the, the black line is the model. So here we have a linear regression that actually is a perfect line. And the random forest is this noisy line with these uh, piecewise parts here where we didn't have any testing data, and then some noisy line uh, later on. So we can see, for instance, for the linear regression that these cloud of points have a green color. So the ECM was predicting that we should trust our model and was basically what we expected given the shape of the data. You just have some small dots here that are yellow, but most of it is, is telling us, yeah, we should, we should trust our model here. Uh, the opposite is for the random forest, because here we have this huge red uh, cluster, 
that is basically telling us that we shouldn't trust our model. And if we see the model prediction would be around here and here, but the data is in the middle. So it's actually accurately uh, telling us, hey, if, you are, if your data is too far from your training data, maybe you shouldn't trust your uh, random forest. But if you're close to it, um, yeah, it might be the case that you can actually trust us. So that's why we see these uh, green areas here. So these were very promising results for the simple data that basically illustrate that uh, our technique is actually working. And now I'm going to show you some uh, real data sets. So we designed several uh, UCI data sets, and I'm going to show here only for airport, but you can see more results, of course, in our paper. So the table shows uh, the results over different uh, regression models. So we have the linear regression, the SBR and the random forest. Um, here we have the different tasks that we have. So we have the random um, cross-validation, the PCA projections, and also the clustering. So here they have the interpolation and extrapolation um, tasks. And here we see the different classes that we have uh, classified. So we have trusted, cautious, and not trusted. And the interesting thing about this result is the MSC, the, the mean square error. So what we would expect is that if we, the, if we classify something as trusted, the error has to be small. And if we say that it's not trusted, the error should be high. And this is actually what we're seeing here. Like, uh, for instance, if we look at this little row, we have that trusted has a 0 0.27 uh, MSC while not trusted has 0 0.99. So we see actually that our model was uh, classifying as not trusted, the one that had higher error, and the one that's trusted as a smaller error, and cautious, of course, in the middle. So we see this trend along um, all these different tasks. And so it's quite robust, not only for IID tasks, but also for this interpolation, extrapolation ones, where we basically don't have the a IID assumption. So the last set of experiments uh, wanted to evaluate the effectiveness of our pipeline. Did it, have, did it make sense to do all this splitting and the extra features? And to test that, we, we compare it to our baseline. That is basically the competence assessor trained over the renal data, only with the standard splitting, so cross-validation random splitting, and no additional features. So here are the results. The only difference here is that we have two classes, just trusted and worn. Uh, we also tested, we, again, we have only the results for airport, but you can see more in, the, in our paper. And the main thing here is that the MSC for, the, for our ECM technique was giving us the same behavior that we had before, very small errors, for the trusted ones, but very big MSC for the Warren class. But this was not the case actually for our baseline. Uh, so actually we see here that the Warren class had a smaller error than the trusted one. So, so it was actually quite, quite important to have uh, this whole procedure that we have of how to split the data, add these additional features to actually make our EMC model work and predict correctly. So to conclude, I just wanted to give you a quick summary of our work and some future work ideas. So we basically presented this empirical confidence model, EECM, that assess the reliability of the regression model predictions. And we showed the effectiveness of the ECM for IID and non-IID training test splits on several, on several benchmarks and in different settings, using different regressors even. And for future works, well, we can try in different applications. We can study other reliability measures as uh, meta features. And we can even integrate our technique in an active learning setting, for instance. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And if you have any questions, just uh, don't hesitate to contact me. You can just send me an email. So thank you. Bye.